Hey there my friend, welcome. It's Dr. Anthony Balduzzi from the Fit Father Project and the Fit Mother Project. And I'm super pumped up for today's video because we're gonna be talking about the definitive guide to sleeping better. And if you've been around our FFP or our FMP YouTube channels, you've probably heard us talk about the importance of sleep. That sleep is the foundation of your health and fitness plan. And we realized that we didn't actually have a deep dive video where we covered the ins and outs of how to sleep better based on some of the circadian biology, which we're gonna get into, and the actual routines. Like what can you do in the morning and in the night to optimize your hormones to sleep better and to get your body functioning better. And what this means for you is when you stick with us in this video today, you're gonna learn how to optimize your sleep routine. So that means you're going to wake up feeling more refreshed, more energized, ready to tackle your day and you won't need as much coffee and you're actually going to be able to get to bed at night without having a racing mind and feeling like you're struggling with sleep. There's a physiologic basis to this stuff and our bodies are meant to sleep well and I'll show you how you can start sleeping better today. So stay tuned, get out some notes and let's dive on in. Fitfatherproject.com all right, so to start approaching this topic of how to sleep better, I want to really go over some circadian biology. And what that means is that our bodies essentially run on a series of clocks, these master clocks that control our hormones, and we often refer to these as our circadian rhythms. And when it comes to sleep, sleep is really about getting our bodies aligned to the proper circadian rhythms. And from a big kind of like metaphysical standpoint, the human organism is designed to be in circadian rhythm with all of nature that's around us and what that means is that particularly with the light of the sun and the setting of the sun controls a lot of our hormones and we have an area of our brain called the suprachiasmatic nucleus that senses light in our environment so when it gets dark outside guess what our eyes get less light and it starts to release melatonin. And when it's sunny in the morning, that sunlight actually hits our eyes and actually increases serotonin and helps make our cortisol work better in the morning. So literally, this is the first key point that most people don't even realize. When we think about ourselves as organisms, we also need to think of ourselves in the environment that we're meant to be living in, which is in the natural environment with the sun and the moon and the cycles. And this is key, because everything we're gonna talk about in this video is gonna have to do with temperature, light and some certain supplements, but it comes down to the circadian biology concept. So here's roughly, a, put a little graph together to talk about two of the main sleep hormones, cortisol and melatonin. And this is basically how things work. Um, we're gonna talk, at the beginning of this graph is the morning. During the morning, our body naturally raises the cortisol levels, and cortisol helps make us feel alert. It starts to release some blood sugar to get our bodies going, and we often hear about cortisol as something we wanna eliminate or reduce, but here's the truth of the matter. If you had no cortisol in your body in the morning, you couldn't even get out of bed. And there are people who actually have a condition where their body stopped producing cortisol, and they need to actually be given supplemental cortisol because it's that essential for our energy in the morning. And cortisol naturally rises in the morning, gives us this, this energized feel, and then it's supposed to taper off later in the day. Now, if we're very stressed and our cortisol levels stay artificially elevated throughout the day, that's where we can have high cortisol at night, which this shows a natural decrease in cortisol curve. But imagine if this line continued straight out, that's going to affect your sleep later in the day. But point being in the morning, cortisol naturally rises, then decreases throughout the day. And then this other hormone that I have here in purple is melatonin. You've probably heard of this as the sleep hormone. And what happens is melatonin is low during the day, but at this pivotal time, right around sundown, when the sun starts going down, there's less light in the ambient environment, our brains sense the decreasing amount of light, and we start releasing melatonin from a place in our brain called the pineal gland. So our brain releases melatonin, and that helps relax the body and get you prepared for sleep. So essentially, cortisol and melatonin are on the seesaw rhythm. In the morning, cortisol is high, melatonin's low, and as the day shifts, melatonin goes high, cortisol goes low. So your sleep depends on the maintenance of this rhythm. When we mess this up, either by having too much cortisol throughout the day or not enough melatonin later in the day, we're gonna talk about why that happens. Everything from your cell phone to your TV and some other factors, our sleep gets screwed up. So we wanna really optimize these hormones to maintain our rhythm. So what can we do? Well. Let's start about looking at this time around night. Because when we think about sleep, we think about night. Although I'm gonna show you why actually good sleep starts in the morning in just a second. But let's talk about the nighttime routine. What do our bodies need to sleep well? Well, the first thing is darkness. Because as we know, when that decreasing light increases melatonin. So what's the main problem for most of us? Well, the problem is, is that most of us have cell phones, laptops, computers, and that's constantly kicking off light. And it's kicking off a particular kind of light called blue light, which is of a spectrum that decreases melatonin production. So what happens? Most 
Most of us are like looking at these phone screens late at night, it's kicking off all that blue light, what does it do? Well, it prevents our brains from releasing melatonin. We're naturally supposed to be in the dark because let's fast, like rewind, I guess let's say even, you know, 500 years ago, we didn't have electricity switches. So guess what? When the sun went down, if you didn't have a gas lamp candle, there was no light. So we're naturally meant to be in this rhythm, but now we have phones kicking off light all the time. So one of the best things we can do is at night around this shift time. So let's say around six, seven, eight o'clock at night, start to dim the lights in the house, start to put away the cell phone, you know, or you can get something like blue block glasses. I want to shout out to my friends, uh, James Swanick over at Swanee's Glasses. They make some cool Ray-Ban looking um, blue blocking glasses, but I wear these and my family wears these at night. Why? It cuts down that blue light from the TV screens, from the phones, and if you do have a phone, then you want to put it on night shift mode to get rid of some of that blue light. This is what a phone on night shift mode looks like. It has like that sepia kind of orange color to it. So got to get the light out. Worst thing you can do before going to bed is being in a bright bathroom with all your lights blaring, brushing your teeth, looking at the light. That's telling your brain, oh hey, it's daytime. You don't need to release any melatonin. So we want to avoid the light. Next thing is cool. Temperature is what I mean. What happens in nature when the sun goes down? Well, we all look at the weather forecast. The, the, it drops by like 20, 30 degrees sometimes. Our bodies are made to sleep in cooler temperatures because heat for our body signals metabolic activity. That's why in the morning we're going to get our bodies moving because that produces heat. Our core temperature drops at night by a couple degrees. And this is very important because our bodies like to sleep um, in a cooler temperature. So if your room is too hot, you've probably experienced this sometime in the summer where you're just so hot, you're restless all night because for your body, it can't get into a relaxed state. So the ideal temperature for sleeping is somewhere around 65 to maybe 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm gonna throw the Celsius um, metrics in the bottom in the, the show notes so you have those as well because that's important that you know that as well. We're not just using the US system here. Um, but we need to sleep in cooler rooms. So what you can do is either get your AC kicking on a little bit more at night or get some of these cool bed cooling systems. These are becoming a big deal. People are buying these things like chili pads or bed jets or things to blow cold air because our bodies prefer to sleep in cold temperatures. So we got to get the ambient temperature down. The next thing is our bodies need to be in a parasympathetic tone. So your nervous system has two main branches. Sympathetic, which is the energetic fight or flight. Parasympathetic, which is this rest or digest. Parasympathetic is what's associated with sleep. And when our nervous system is in a parasympathetic tone, it's easy to fall asleep. So how do we do this? Well, from a physical standpoint, this is why we've eaten a nice dinner a couple hours before. We start to take some deep breaths, maybe stretch our bodies a little bit and not just do vigorous activity at night so we keep that parasympathetic tone. But from a mental perspective, and I think this is what holds a lot of people up, is so many people are kind of agitated mentally at night and you feel like you can't uh, calm down your mind. And one simple trick that you can do is get something like a five minute gratitude journal where at the end of the day, you kind of do a daily recap and you jot down some successes, some things you're grateful for, and you close the loop Oops. And this is a really, really important concept from like a psychological standpoint is our brains, um, if we have an activity that we haven't gotten closure to, keeps that open loop throughout the night. So the brain's constantly thinking about things. So what if at the end of the day, we're like, this is where I brought this work project today. I know it's not done, but it's the loop is closed for today. And this is what I'm gonna do tomorrow. Even something as simple as that, adding a little bit of consciousness to that particular activity will help make sure that your brain's not worrying about something all night and you can start to close the loop. So we have some more tips and tricks for you down in the article linked in the description. But for now, just know that we're looking at a dark room, we're getting rid of the blue light, maybe having those blue blocking glasses, colder in temperature, and we're closing the loops psychologically, and we're also relaxing the body through some stretching. So those are the important things at night. Some supplements that can help. Number one is magnesium. I actually think I have some over here. Um, and can you hand me the magnesium for a second? So the magnesium, this is a really good powdered magnesium, and this is a really cool mineral um, that actually helps relax the body. And some, a lot of people find that when they take magnesium at night, a little bit of a fizzy drink, it can really get that body into that relaxed parasympathetic state. I'm a big fan of magnesium. Another supplement that can be good is some teas. So we have some different nighttime teas here, and there are a lot of good herbal teas. These ones happen to have some mushrooms in them as well. Um, but some herbal teas like Calm from traditional medicinals or any of these sleepy teas can be really great. And a lot of these have the herbs like chamomile and lavender. These are very research proven herbs that can help you improve your sleep. So we love the routine of just a cup of tea at night because it's great. Kind of helps you unwind, de-stress, and it actually has herbs that legitimately help. Caution, I would look out for some of these natural sleep supplements that have more heavy herbs, like let's say things like hops or like valerian 
in root, um, or so there's other hypnotic uh, herbs like Jamaican dogwood. Some of these really do work, but they can make you drowsy in the morning. And just because something is quote unquote natural does not mean it's not heavy potency. When I'm talking about teas at night, I'm talking about these just gentle herbal teas that don't have these heavy you know, sedatives and hypnotics in them. So magnesium, some tea, and then if you want, you could do a little bit of melatonin. Um, this is a three milligram melatonin, but remember, your body can produce all the melatonin it needs naturally, especially if you do what I'm gonna teach you in, the, in just a second with the morning routine, your body naturally secretes melatonin. This is not something you need all the time, but I do think it's something that you probably should have on hand in your household, because like, let's say you travel uh, cross country or across the world, and your sleep cycle is a little messed up. Well, taking some external melatonin in supplement form can help retrain and get your circadian rhythm back on balance. So it's a nice tool to have, not something you need every day. Although the research shows that melatonin is generally safe and it actually serves as an antioxidant in the brain, can help, uh, can help prevent some of the, the cognitive decline with things like Alzheimer's. So there are a lot of benefits to melatonin as well. I like to get mine naturally, so I just use the blue blockers, et cetera. So that is some of the nighttime sleep stuff. You may know some of that, but this next bit I, I reckon is something that might be new for you. A lot of guys don't realize, a lot of women don't realize as well, um, that good sleep starts in the morning with morning sunlight right into our eyes. Because when we get morning sunlight into our eyes, remember we're intimately supposed to be designed to be in contact with the sun and the moon, that sunlight hits that brain, that area called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, and triggers our brains to make serotonin. Serotonin makes us feel amazing. It is one of those feel good chemicals. So what do we give people who have depression? Well, sometimes we give them selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors to increase serotonin levels. Well, guess what? Your brain can make serotonin by interfacing with sunlight first in the morning. And guess what happens when we're making the serotonin in the morning from the sunlight? It gets converted to melatonin at night and gives us more melatonin. So getting sunlight in the morning is one of the best things you can do for your sleep because it really entrains this whole circadian rhythm pattern. Remember, it's like at night we want it dark and in the morning we want it light. So getting outside and getting five to 10 minutes of sunshine directly in your eyes. So if you wear contacts, keep the contacts out, get the good sunlight. If you wear glasses, take them off for a little bit, just glance up at the sun. For most people they find it's easiest and I do this every single morning. Um, sometime between let's say 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. before the sun is too hot and too bright, it primes the body to be active. It smooths out this cortisol rhythm, and this is actual research, helps your body produce the serotonin and the melatonin, absolutely huge. What else can we do in the morning as well to help with our sleep? Well, in addition to getting the sunlight, the other things that our body needs is water, because we've been dehydrated for seven, eight hours, so immediately we need, when we wake up, we gotta get a 20 to 32 ounce glass of water and throw some trace minerals in there through some pink Himalayan sea salt or another mineral supplement. Chug that back, because your body is like 70% water, right? And we're dehydrated overnight, so get the water in your body, get the sunlight, and start moving your body. Even if it's like a gentle yoga, even something as simple as bouncing like this. I know it sounds crazy, but you actually have these vessels in your body called lymphatic vessels that moves fluid throughout your entire body. And the lymph needs to be stimulated by movement. And when you're sleeping, lymph is very stagnant. That's one of the reasons why we get up, we feel all stiff in the morning like Frankenstein. And then as we start moving, we feel like we're getting a little more fluid. That's because the movement gets the lymph flowing. So the ideal morning routine, this is what I have the morning plan, increase your water, Increase your movement. It could be a little bit of yoga. It could be a morning exercise routine. It could be bouncing on a trampoline, like a rebounder trampoline is one of the best things to move lymph and get some sunlight in your eyes. This is the ideal setup. And I know there may be circumstances in your life that means that you can't necessarily get all of these things in. You might get out the door so early in the morning that there's no sun up. I get it, it's okay, get the sun when you can. But I think there are some tips and tricks in this video that you can apply to take control of your sleep. I think the bigger picture message is starting to understand sleep in terms of these overall life rhythms that your body needs. The sun cycle, you know, the, the, the setting of the sun, so the light dark cycle, the temperature cycle, the movement cycle, your body runs on rhythms and sleep is really determined by how closely can you get your, your habits to sync up with those natural rhythms that your body needs. So that is the big picture here. Again, like all these videos, we have an in-depth article link that you can see over on the Fit Father Project and Fit Mother Project blogs that has some of these tips. Also has some links to some of these supplements and blue blogging glasses and stuff like that that you might enjoy. But the big picture here is let's start looking at sleep holistically. Look at some of the things that you're doing with your evening routine. Do you feel like you're getting too much light? Do you know that you're sleeping in too hot of a room? Do you feel like your mind's always racing? And Do you need to do a little bit of meditation, prayer, or closing the loops? And in the morning, are you intentionally getting your body moving? Are you drinking enough water in the morning. Um, you know, 
Are you getting the morning sunlight, which also gives you the vitamin D? These are some questions to ask yourself. And if you can find even one of those things that gives you some insight on something you can optimize, it will help get you on a better track to better sleep and better health. Sleep is foundational. That's why we talk so much about this and we'll have more videos in the future. Um, really on some of this morning routine stuff, like how to get your body going up in the morning. We're going to shoot one of those videos a little bit later today. So I'm excited to share that with you as well. Um, but overall, uh, thank you for being here. I hope you found this valuable. And if you did and you like our Fit Father Project and Fit Mother YouTube channels, give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. We have dozens more videos on topics like sleep, but also proper workouts, how to eat to lose fat and build muscle, how to get your family healthy too. This is what we're at all about here at the Fit Father Project, Fit Mother Project. So give us a thumbs up, drop us a comment below with your thoughts, hit subscribe, and we'll see you in the future videos. And I can't wait to hear from you. Can't wait to have you implement these tips, and I'll talk to you soon, my friend.